the audience members were trying to do a hybrid. People have wanted us to have in-person meetings so you could come, and also if people want to attend via Zoom. We tried it two weeks ago, trying to work the bug. We're still trying to work the bugs out. So um, we have one person on Zoom um, who's been, you know, checking it out to see how the volume, how, you know, if they can follow along, okay. Okay. So. All right, so first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended or added to the agenda tonight? Mm -mm. Okay, hear none, just need a motion to accept the agenda. So, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, first up we have Alex. Alex is looking for some permission for a snowmobile. Uh, White River Valley Ramblers just looking to get permissions for the class four roads, all the sections that are on file from last year. Everything's the same, nothing's changed. Uh, just for the use for the upcoming season. Yeah, some class three roads you use a little bit of too. A little bit here and there, yeah. I just want to make sure. She puts that in the minutes. Yeah, I guess uh, there are short sections, mostly crossings, but there is a section of Finley Bridge we use um, over the interstate on um, Christian Hill. We use that a little bit there too. Other than that, I think that's it. Hooper Hollow. But, um, yeah, same sections we've been using for years. And part of Finley Bridge goes in front of my house, and they're very nice to put up signage. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I live in a house with a blue house, the blue roof. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's where it turns right off uh, and goes up into the field there. Did you and um, Ken from the ATV, you guys were going to look at that little piece on, isn't it Hooper, Hooper. Hollow? Um, by like where it came down from the property that Jack Cowdery owns. You guys were going to look at the water coming off that road. Did you, you know, guys get a chance to that? And what I think the biggest issue there is that the riprap on that whole side of the road is higher than the road. So I don't think it's anything really coming out of that section of trail. If you go up there and look at the riprap that's done on that whole basically from the intersection of Camp Rook all the way down, that it sticks up four inches out of the, higher than the road. Because we're looking at the side of Jack Cowdery, because Chris and I did go look at it, and you could see the water coming down that little piece where Jack Cowdery, you know, do you know what I mean? Where he drives yep. on the, yep. you're going down here, on, the left, on the left. Down. Yeah. So yep. we did go and look at it. Okay. And um, so we were just curious if, yeah, I haven't really done anything with it. No, no, I drove fine. through there, and okay. we actually were up there not too long ago. And um, you know, I kind of looked at the whole thing, and really, anything that comes down out of that should go into that uphill side of the ditch, and then through a culvert underneath. But yeah. there's no, okay. there's no real culvert under that curb cut, and then that whole. Uh, that whole section, if you go up through there and look at that riprap job, it's all okay. higher than the road bed, which... All right, well, I guess... We'll look at it. I know... Yeah, I mean, normally we're not too picky, but that <clears throat> that access piece, it, it's all ledge rate on that access piece, so there's there's no way to, like, ditch it. Well, one side just drops off the bank. The other side, it's, it's ledge, so you can't yeah. ditch it. But it, when you get through the, you know, the freeze and thaw cycles, the water literally comes right down that and then it comes right across Hooper Hollow. Yeah. So then it makes it icy right in the bottom of that bowl there, you know. Oh, okay. um, yeah, a little bit more. But I don't know, we just thought maybe at some point like, you know, installing a water bar or something like that might, yeah. might yeah, slow I mean, some of it down. Or, it gets so much truck and wheeler traffic. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest thing. So much, many vehicles go through there. Because uh, we've had some complaints from Hooper Hollow residents in the past oh, on it being icy right in the bottom of the yeah, so I think we kind of. Uh, but 
for that, but we were just, yeah. So yeah. it's fine. We, we'll take, Chris and I can take a other look at it too in the spring. But if you're just up there, just. Well, that's yeah, we're going to be doing a little bit more trail work here and there and signing and all that here pretty soon. So okay. we'll have a look, a little bit more look at it. Okay. Um, you know, it might be something we can hand shovel a little bit of a, a ditch in. And the mats that we have, Alex, are all up to date. You said there wasn't any changes, so nothing the changed. Match that no. we got last year all up to date. On no, the only, I mean, that, and I, I have to talk with Jordan a little bit, Jordan Garrow, about the, the property right by uh, the Christian Hill Bridge crossing. Mm -hmm. He was planning on pasturing and leaving a, some fencing up. And, um, you know, we're trying to come up with a workaround whether we go out further behind his place or. Or what, but um, you know, he said that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. But, Certainly, never my couple of years, I've never had a complaint about ever about snowmobiling or anything. So. Not usually, no, yeah, yeah every once in a while, I'll get a call that somebody, you know, whether whether the groomer dragged a little snow out through the road or something like that, and, yeah, you know, usually we hand shovel it off as soon as we, yeah, no. do it. But, Every now and then they don't. <laughs> Every now and then. Sometimes you don't see it. Yeah. No doubt. Anybody, anything else from the board? Or just need a motion to allow the White River Valley Ramblers permission for the trails for this winter? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Anything else, Alex? You all set? I Good. That's it. Alex, next year can we get you guys to come back to do burgers and fries at the Ford Festival? Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it's hard enough, to, I tell you, it's hard to get anybody to do anything with the, with the club. Um, you know, we do trail days. It's, it, we actually have more people active this year than we've had in a long time. You know, a couple of years ago we did a, a uh, a bridge redecking up off Charlie Wilson Road and warned it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Three of us showed up. It, and it just, you know, it, but we did just have a trail, trail maintenance day down near uh, Route 100 and Stockbridge and we had five people show up, which is sadly a record number <laughs> for, for the last bunch of years, but. Hopefully, we're, we're kind of pulling some younger kids in. My kids are going to slowly get involved told to show up and do some work on some stuff. <laughs> a couple of the other guys have some, some kids as well that are kind of getting up into that age where they want to do some work, so. Yeah. Uh, we're trying. We're trying. Doug's retired now. He can get himself a snowmobile. What's that? I said Doug's retired now. He can get himself a snowmobile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could use another groomer operator, too, if you want. Um, trying to stay out of the snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. All right. Then we have, uh, next we have public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody would like to bring up. And I know, Rick, that uh, whatever you may have is not on the agenda. So... Yeah, I just came to listen to questions if anybody has them. Okay. But we should, well, do we want to let Doug go and then we should talk about that? Because some stuff has come up out of, that I, I had a conversation today about, I mean, obviously you've had the letters about, that we've sent, that I've sent, and um, that, that Derek is certainly aware of, and mm -hmm. then um, I gave you the report that had gone to A&R, uh, enforcement agent Dan Mason, nice guy, and um, that's in your packet. And then the class four road committee went to look at the road bed on Saturday. And um, we'll say right out of the gate, made a mistake. I thought that this road was a class four road. And Carl Russell, God bless him, said, Therese, it's, and I brought the map, it's actually a class three. And um, the state actually has a category for it. And we have two roads in Bethel that are like this. They're class three, but they're not up to standard. So the state considers them functionally class four roads. 
but I had no idea that, and uh, so that's my my mistake. Um, but the class four road committee did go and meet um, and look at the road bed itself on Saturday, and I talked to Carl today, and he said they're meeting on November third um, to talk about what they had, and they'll have a report for the select board on November eighth. Um, in the meantime, um, I wrote today to Dan Mason, who's the enforcement officer for A&R, and said, is there somebody at A&R who can help, who can come down and talk to us about the proper way to get to deal with water runoff so that we're not violating any of the water quality standards? Um, it's my recommendation that, the, that we go up um, as soon as Alan can and fill in any of the water bars or gullies that were made and, and smooth them out. And until we have somebody from a &R, I also wrote to Two Rivers tonight, and um, to get us help to say, okay, look, we, how can we properly deal with a runoff so that we're not forcing our stormwater runoff onto somebody's private property um, which may cause them damage, in which case leads us open for problems down the road. So I think that we need to go in and put the road back to the condition it was before because work was done on that road without a permit to work in the right of way and without a, um, you know, without a permit to work in the right of way. And after we sent letters, work was continued to be done. So at least Yes, I realize that the water would stay in the road, which is not ideal, but it currently goes down the road into an existing culvert. But I think we need proper guidance from A&R and two rivers to come in and say, look, what are you going to do to this road? We need to put some money into it. We have class four money that we've set aside, or in this case, class three money that we have to do some maintenance. But I think that we need professional guidance, a and Two Rivers, to come in and say, look, here's the best way to deal with this. Um, but I think that in the meantime, um, I, I think the select board needs to authorize the, us to put the road back to the way it was prior to um, the condition prior to work done without permit to work in the right of way. And then gives us the winter to make a plan at least to try to get A&R Two Rivers to come in and say in the spring if there's some work that needs to be done then at least we have some time to make a plan on how to properly deal with the runoff from that road so that we're not diverting it um, and causing you know damage some roads. It's a tough road because there's um, stone walls so it's hard you don't necessarily want to break through a stone wall to you know divert water so it's kind of trying to figure it out and this road goes to a home in rochester um so it's not like it butts rochester and goes to a real public road you know so it's not like this is a road that we would use during irene or something else to get out that's so um, what is the road mainly used for now in its current usage I think it gives access to the homeowner. I think, is it Sedgwick? Is yes. that the right name? Oh, Sedgwick in, in Rochester. And it allows uh, Derek and Beverly access to their fields. And um, so do you have cows or corn, hay, what you got? Hay, hay okay. pasture and fall. Mostly a hay field. Yeah. And when we're talking water bars, I mean, how many water bars are in the road that would installed that shouldn't be or are we talking like one or two or is this I don't know or? Alex do you know four or five and after we'd have to go back and look at that so it's a matter of spraying one or two gravel and it, it wouldn't take a lot it's a small it's amount, amount of small amount, amount of gravel fill yeah, yeah. well I mean I, we were gonna do it on Thursday but and I had thought we were going to be able to just put gravel in them and then it was, but it was still going to cause runoff on the property. So it wasn't the solution that we needed. I thought it was going to work to help slow down any water, kind of filter it. Sometimes we use that situation elsewhere. 
and it's not going to work. So it wouldn't be a ton of material for us, but there's the material, the road's so great. I mean, when was the last time that road was ever like really maintained by? Oh. For almost 40 years, it's never been, you know, a grader put out on it or anything like that. 40? Four. Almost 40 years. Ah, I would say I wondered. Um, so, you know, so we could bring in a little bit of material and, and, and deal with it. and Because and, um, usually the functions stop at the last house on the hill there. Yeah, which is also um, Derek's. That's where usually, his that, yeah, that's usually where everything stops and comes down. The here. road is actually used quite a little bit. It goes out to Rochester, Four Corners. It's where you can go up over the hill to Mount Cushman and into Rochester. Oh. To the left to the Charlie Wilson Road. To the right, you go down to School Street Extension. The road, is, once you get past the Sedwick place, the Sedwick camp that's just over the line in Rochester, the road gets very, it's very bad. It's, you can get over there with a four-wheel drive Jeep or something like that, but it's, you can't get over it with a pleasure car or a, even a regular size four-wheel drive truck. It's worse than our section? Pardon me? Worse than our section? Much, yeah. much worse, yeah. much worse. So basically it gives, Mr. Sedgwick access to his property. That's but, right. But that's that's the only it. access I've ever known he's had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, does he have an easement from you? Or just over the no, town? No, just no it's the just, the, three just the town. I don't know if you two also Just the an town easement. highway. So, um, so yeah, so I, like I said, I emailed Dan Mason, I emailed Two Rivers, and I think that in the meantime, we need to fix the work that was done without a right of way permit to work in the right of way, permission to work in the right of way was not granted. And then um, let's figure out how to deal with it correctly. Mm -hmm. has, a, has a letter yeah. been sent to the, the landowner that's yeah. been installing the- Both, yeah, there was in your season, packet. You know, it, was, it was in your yeah, packet last, last week. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes, there was, and, and, and Derek knows because okay. he had one. I sent the same Well, exact I'm just thinking, you know, people. if we go out and fix it and all of a sudden go out there and there's Four new water bars put in there. You know, yes. like, kind of a problem. You know, yeah, so, exactly. So I think what would happen. I mean, is should we send him some sort of letter saying yes. that you know the town per the decision has made the decision to do board. this and yep. and this is the, the work will be done within this amount of time. Anything after that needs a permit or something. And, yeah, which or is else no, not already. Yeah, but you may want to put something on the landowner that you know if they go out there and dig well, up the road again, then it may be at their cost to put it back. Well, I think that's you know, it. I think know, I'll have like to we send. We can't have them continue to do That's it a good idea. Road. I think we need to you send know, a letter to Mr. Sedgwick yeah. as well, since if somebody is maintaining the road on Mr. Sedgwick's behalf, then we'll send the letter to, to both. Well, you know, just easily, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, and just and wait and to fix do it. it. Yeah. But if, if they continue to do that, then there would yeah. be some recourse that well, yeah. the town would take. And I think we just need to... Uh, we don't we're not being get... unfair by saying you need to go fix it. We're People. saying we're going to go fix it. That's a question that I had is, you know, who's, who's nickel? But what you're saying, Chris, is we fix it in our nickel at this point, mm. and if there is further encroachment, mm. uh, we would ask the landowner mm. to... <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, and I think it gives us the opportunity to say that we, we have notified the landowner, right? Yes, yes. yes. Um, but we're not, you know, unfairly... Because, well, that. the landowner is... But if they do Derek it again... Derek and Beverly yeah. own on both sides of that road, yeah, it's so... Not, it's not the landowner. It's no, it's not the landowner. And um, so Derek and Beverly own both sides of the class three road. Mm -hmm. So, but I think that a letter um, to... Mr. Sedgwick, as well as his caretaker, and just let all parties involved just send a blanket letter that the select board talked about it. Um, we've reached out to A and R. We've reached out to Two Rivers. Um, we, um, the class four road committee, look at the road bed. We'll have their report on the eighth. But in the meantime, we are again saying there's no work to be done. We're going to fix it within the next two weeks. Bring it back to pre, you know. I don't want to say any good standard, but condition prior to work without work in the right away permit. Well, we can and well, we continue we'll to the investigate day. and make well, a plan, yeah. a proper plan, and then once that's done, we can inform everybody. Look at this is what A and R and everybody has said, and so here's the proper solution. It's a town, you know, we're the ones who are going to put money into it, so I only want to do this for sure. once, so we don't throw good money after mm -hmm. bad, as they say. Support. And if they have concerns mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that 
there is water drainage <laughs> that needs to be addressed the way we had it before. Yeah. Just let us know what they are so that we can include those concerns in whatever planning takes place. Yep. It's not a say, we'll do it your way, I'm just saying. No, no. Um, with yeah. planning, right. Why do you put those water well, bottles on? With planning considerations, yeah, because they're concerned that the water currently is going because it's like a riverbed now. I think is sort of. I mean, there's, there's the water just goes down the road. I think eventually it hits the Mitchells and hits that. Um, doesn't go that doesn't go that far. There's a culvert at yeah. the top of the top of the hill before it pitches down to, yeah. to Mitchell's Drive. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if the select board is good with that, let's have a motion or consensus. Yeah, so do we need a motion, or do you need consensus from the board? Consensus is fine. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You okay with that? I mean, seems like everybody else on the board. I realized what road you're talking about because there's two roads. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes, yeah, not right road. It's no, still, it's it's still the tail end of Gilead. Gilead. It's still Gilead, you said yeah. That road? That's not that. That's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's the tail end of Gilead there. Yeah. Well, the road that goes over through Randolph. Not the one that goes by your farm, right? You're talking about the road that goes up by Mitchell's. Yes. Yeah. Not the one that goes by your farm. No. No, that's right road. Yeah. So we're still at the end of Gilead. I'm sorry. I should have been clear. I forgot he lives in a fork of of two. I yeah. should have said that. <clears throat> okay. So it sounds like the consensus of the board is to do as described by yeah by trees. So so we will get working on that and. Yes, sir. Sure, Teresa will give you some updates on when, when we'll get the work done. And, yeah. Um, and, and I would imagine that any of the drainage work, any of the final drainage work probably wouldn't happen until the spring of next year. Yeah, um, and then yeah, at the we'll, earliest, so. we'll get input. I'll, we'll, I'll write to Mr. Sedgwick and we'll get input from them as well. And, and um, we know there might be logging out there, possibly this winter, if they're going to log. Um, then you know that that means that somebody's going to help take care of some issues with that road, anyways, which will be nice. We'll make sure of that because uh, they'll be going out on that road, so that could help our problem too, actually. So, all right. All right. So I don't know about Doug. He might have a list. Hold it <laughs> I knew it. Well, I was not listening. Still, you're on the development review board now. <laughs> yeah, we just elected you. We just elected you on the development review board. Um, you didn't say no. Thank you, Doug. I didn't mean, say yes, please. <laughs> but we don't need a yes. We, we got your wife's permission. She said sign them <laughs> yeah. up. So. Was, was there any other public comment? Anything that's not on the agenda that anybody would like to bring up, comment on? Now's the time to do it. Or else? You have to wait two more weeks. Okay, so we'll move on. And we just need a um, signature for the municipal resolution for the bylaws. Yeah, so we did this one before, and um, it has to be Trevor's name on here because the Randolph town manager, Randolph, has agreed to deal with the um, money. Mm -hmm. And I had you guys sign it thinking you signed first, but actually planning commission had to sign first. So okay. um, the good news, this is the grant that um, is for bylaw modernization. It, there will be no match, matching funds required. Two Rivers is putting up the match. Um, and this is to help us create housing friendly zoning bylaws to adjust, address the housing shortage and I did put in the one statistic or two statistics I thought were interesting. 14% um, of households in Bethel pay more than 50% of their income towards housing. Wow. And there is also an estimated need of over 4,000 more units by 2030 to meet expected demand in Vermont. So um, that, that's just, that's crazy. That seems just so like so many. So, um, so we just need a motion for, for to approve your signature. Motion again. to allow myself to sign. So moved. <coughs> Second. Okay. We'll moved by Paul. Second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. 
that 50% figure is why I sent the link about housing for right. those who are least able to afford it. There yeah, you go. It's, it's that's Bethel. Yeah, it's staggering. Well, it's yeah, it's 50, yeah, 14 percent. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, a lot of communities in Vermont, especially now after a lot of the real estate just got bought up and right, everything else. Yeah, you know, we makes just it have to be aware. Yeah, so does that include rental uh, tenants too, or, yes. or homeowners? Rental tenants, a lot yeah, of it includes everybody. Yeah, that's well, going to be know those uh, rents are considerably <laughs> higher than they have been. Sure. Yeah. Ah, so that would account for. I think that you're gonna. Um, Pressure. That's gonna be the push is to <clears throat> find, um, create housing opportunities, multi-use housing opportunities, mm -hmm. and they're trying to do it within, almost from, you know, Mary Ellen Bachelors, Chris Jarvis, past the school, that area, maybe up to the end of South Maine. They're trying to find it so that it's pedestrian friendly, so that people can walk bike um, from in these certain areas. So it's hard for Bethel because what isn't in the floodplain or the river right. corridor like area. or yeah, conservation easements was out by Onion Flats. All the conservation easements for that land was mm -hmm. um, gone a while ago. So the developable area is tricky mm -hmm. for Bethel. Yeah, and that's one thing that the Planning Commission is currently working on, looking at aerial photos, topographical maps, trying to figure out to do growth, right. but mm -hmm. it's hard to. And one of the interesting things that came up was in the meeting, couple meetings I've had with Two Rivers about this is even looking at third stories, which is, is if you can't go out, go up. Right. So it, it'll be interesting to see. Well, yeah, the other thing that came up in the meeting the other night was, do we want to consider a changing the acreage limit, lower, reducing the acreage limit in certain sectors so that we can have more pro more developable property than yeah. what we currently have. Which is exactly what the Planning Commission is working on. That's part of it, is changing zoning districts so that maybe instead of uh, four acre, it's two acre or one acre. And it's interesting, Rick Benson had looked at the town surrounding us. So Royalton doesn't have zoning unless you're triggered into Act 250. Some places have their entire town is all one acre zoning. So it's interesting. He was looking to see if there was some consensus among the surrounding towns for zoning. And currently, uh, he said Randolph is probably the closest. But that is something that we're looking at. Mary Floyd and Farron Griffin of the Conservation Commission came and talked to the Planning Commission, and, and um, just to see what we were, you know, what were we talking about, what we, you know, and, and assuring obviously there's some sections in resource conservation that are 20 acres that you wouldn't want to. But there, touch, are, there but. are also, you know, there are a few um, sites here in the village area that could accommodate uh, multiple housing, mm -hmm. but the. The problem that owners are having is that these structures are old and they, like the gentleman that was here last time, to put yeah. so much into it to then not make it feasible to rent it even out. Yeah, you know? that's true. So maybe in some ways, instead of maybe building, if, if the state would partnership or grant money to <clears throat> allow some of these individuals to fix up these multi-unit places like... You know, we have two places right down here. I mean, mm -hmm. we have the burned North out structure Mason. here that's doing nothing. I mean, there are, there, are, there are structures around here that could do something with some help. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it just doesn't make financial sense to spend $400,000 oh, fixing yeah. up something you're only going to get back uh, $1,200 a month. Like the wheel know, house. So. I mean, you put a lot of money into the wheel house, yeah. but still would have to throw a tremendous amount more into right. it just to get it up to code. Well, you know, or any of the pieces of the. Uh, the structures right down here in Blossom Block, those ones, you know, right. there's there's opportunities to house people. We but have an apartment in the owner block that we are legally not allowed to rent. Yeah. I could live there as an owner, but we can't rent it legally. Yeah. Which, because it's a third story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because off the back side of the building, it's a yeah. third story. So even even though it's technically only the second story, the, the drop off, and that's where the bedroom is, mm. is three stories off the ground. So, so it'd, be, it'd be nice that, you know... You, so you can jump, but your tenants aren't. Right. <laughs> yeah, they'll let you jump. Yeah. You have a ladder, but it's like <laughs> yeah. 25 yeah. feet. It doesn't even make it yeah. one floor. Fire department shows up, they're like, yeah, you're, you're in trouble. Mm. Just Felt jump. more like a joke than anything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, I mean, we do have structures yeah, that are available in town. They just 
well, they're going to consume a lot of money. Yeah. Spaces. Mm. I mean, even above Richardson's, the Wheeler House. Like, there's tons of mm. spaces Ooh. that could be developed. I think it really is just the capital. So we might be looking at some of the little like, niches on, mm -hmm. you know, like the Arnold Block and other ones yeah. like that of that could right. turn into something but can't right the current well setup. but that's not our we're not zoning isn't stopping her the well, fire right. safety right. or right. somebody is to, but so where's the wheeler house i'm sorry it's it's the, the big white house, house. Um, across from central yeah she Park comes in big white house oh oh okay. yes okay. yes oh yep sally and sally. Derek yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. but there's a couple of them right on that stretch yes. that side of the road that are so the three or four that's units in there we lived in there right. first came yeah that's right and between those they would house what Five? There was five in there. I mean, between those, just those two buildings, there, there's what, nine potential? Mm. I wonder you what. Know, um, apartments like if, or whatnot? Um, housing and conservation, like the agency of housing and conservation, if, like, if there's somewhere where we could approach them to say, here's, here's what we're seeing. We're hearing the state saying, there's this need for housing. We can meet it. We can actually, we have spaces. What we need is money to do. The, the renovations needed to bring older buildings up, up the to code. Yeah. And yeah. People. Yeah. yeah. Supposedly, that is a push of Governor well, Scott. She got Scott's. a ton of money to upgrade that house. She, it just didn't get done well. Yeah. And, and like I, the wheeler house. Yeah. She got like a quarter million dollars to upgrade. Wow. And hey. they just didn't do it right. Yeah. I think oh, that. Nancy, Nancy Brown, you mean? Go back to the. Going back, or? yeah, not the current. They got the, the historical money. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, we moved there right after Nancy finished the, the renovation, and they were they were acting. You know, the units were rented, and the place was full. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then she sold it, and then it started to go downhill. Yeah. So I think. I, I mean, there are some. You know, be interesting to do a study on how many structures we do have inside the village that mm -hmm. could be something that maybe mm -hmm. need. I also, I wonder well, come to a planning or, commission meeting. Well, well, I, well I we'll listen to the, you. What the tie-in yeah. could be with the, the Bethel for All for, for the Better Connections, because so much of that is about accessibility and developing in a walkable downtown district. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I wonder if the state would kind of favor that. And I know that would be in the, in the sort of subsequent mm -hmm. phases after yeah. that grant. but. I don't know, and currently, too, it's hard for us, too, because it's private property. So that's the other trick for us yeah. is to how people are going to do it. But it has been a push of Governor Scott's, and there was talk that there was money coming down the pike to help to help developers and help people that own, you know, to, to, to develop this. So I, I don't know what that mechanism is currently, but there's been talk about that. Um, so hopefully um, the governor you know, is a, and legislature, they pass the money along for development. There's got to have to be rules, regulations, and standards, but right. it's hard for us to promote growth on, you know, and private property, right. but, but certainly, um, anyway, so that's what the planning commission is working on, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, Not to mention, they've made it so <laughs> difficult in the state to even rent out your piece now. I mean, it's not like the old days where it was easy just to rent to people, and now it's, they make it so hard, like, especially after, you know, going through right now with, you know, I mean, how many landowners have not even had rental income in certain places for so long? I mean, how can we sure. expect them to continue using their buildings yeah. like that, you know? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's a I difficult. Mean, they haven't made it easy for anybody to own anything. No, it's true. It's been, and certainly with COVID, it's been difficult, so. But anyways, that's what's going on with this grant. That's what's going on with the Planning Commission, the same things we've been talking about. But I did think those were a couple interesting statistics that yeah. to, to think about as far as housing. Okay, we had the emergency shelter storage replacement. So <clears throat> this, so Cindy Metcalf is now the chair of the emergency management committee. The trailer that we have now is eight by eight by 20. And I guess the floor's rotting out, the, it's leaking and there's, she said what we need is, and this is Joanne Marshall also, I spoke to Joanne today, what we need to house are two pallets four foot high. The school has said that there's no room in the school. Um, Joanne followed up today with John Hubble and John said that the room that was vacant that they moved a teacher into. So what we need to do is to purchase um, either something half that size, uh, four by four by 10, or could we build something? Um, you know, someone had asked if the, if Lindley's gonna decide, could her kids build a shed? I'm like, I, 
I don't know. Oh, do you want something middle school? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the bigger question. Well, that's it. I'm thinking, wow, these are middle school. But I also said, what about a metal shed? You know, so I'm not really sure. I do have. Um, How accessible does it need to be? Like, well, I mean, somebody, I just gotta think. There's places oh. in town where. Well, it needs. I mean, to we be got the, we we have the whole you know the <clears throat> the old um, you know Vermont stove place down there. I mean, that's well, I just think, I think, well, the, most of that's the, not the even idea used. The there was because the school is the emergency shelter. Yeah. Yeah. So having the supplies right adjacent to the building makes it makes it real easy to. Either that Start or the, maybe the ability to rent or own a conex, small conex box or something, you yeah. know? Uh, I would talk to Dave out to get in and see if there's room at the top of the fire station. Up, up above? Yeah. Oh, in that room where you guys do training sometimes? Yeah, there's a tunnel for us to crawl through, but there's plenty of room up there. I don't know if Dave feels the same. But. Okay, space at the FD. That would kind of be the good central spot for it. Yeah, because you're not that far from the school. Um, because that was the thing, I was trying to figure out a price for um, one of these. And then I spoke to, I called, um, well, Lucky is sold to Big Tech's Trailer World, so I called down there, Big Texas, and they said I could check with Pac-Van, but anything that they owned was 20 feet long. Like, we don't need Yeah, they sold the 20 the small trucks to big tech trailer road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah. So I did call down there and then but twenty feet we just don't need it for two pallets. So I wasn't sure because um, that was my question was how you know we have seven hundred and twenty five dollars in the emergency shelter budget which has been there for a long time. I don't know where it came from originally. Um, but that isn't gonna buy us anything. So um, I wasn't sure if a select board member wants to spearhead this project and try to figure out what our options are and what we can do. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Okay. I think with also talking with Cindy there at, at Ford Fest, I think she also had some concerns in regards to some, some of the supplies themselves mm -hmm. yeah, um, that, that we may need to take, take a look at yep. um, and acquire over time. Or, yeah. you know, Yep, that's what she said. We also need to tear down some of those. Uh, both she and Joanne Marshall had said uh, they need to go into some plastic totes mm -hmm. so that they're, you know, that way it's, it's um, because the critters have access. To, so whatever's in the pallet now that's wrapped up, whether it's blankets or whatever. There's also some things in the school, I believe, Paul, that I thought that mm -hmm. someone said there were blankets in the school. No, All right, more. maybe they're in the, maybe yeah. I misunderstood that. So um, it would be could, something about breaking um, it down. The existing trailer, could that be sold for scrap metal and bring in some revenue that should then yeah. go into yeah. that budget? Yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we would probably have, well, we'll have to, we'll see how much is left because we have to get somebody to take it down and, and haul right. it off. But yeah, we could find someone who'll we'll scrap it for us. We'll take a look at it and see if, if there's any chance of repair. Mm -hmm. And then you could look into the fire, fire department's option. That's a pretty steep staircase and whatnot going up there. Yeah, we have to do something to, yeah. But if um, you had, it was in totes and it was a little more. Yeah, I mean, if, if we could get it to the point where it was still mm -hmm. functional. Mm -hmm. I, mean, but, I haven't been in it. So. Well, the only reason why I was saying it, it sounded like we were gonna need to acquire additional supplies, which could mm -hmm. then mean yeah. we need additional room, you know? Yeah. True. But, so if we're just thinking two pallets yeah. now, that two really might be four. Because yeah, that's yeah. not really, it doesn't sound like enough supplies to do the type of Irene right well, uh, yeah uh, I will say that Cindy um, Cindy said we only needed half the space so yeah. um, you know Joanne had mentioned that about currently about two pallets four feet high yeah, they, and they, I they know that give you a good and that's what she said was you know something half the size of the existing was Cindy's comment so like you I've never been inside of it and um, but also Joanne made a good point too is obviously thank God knock on wood that we haven't had a big you know another I mean yeah. it's gonna be hard to prep for something as big as Irene right, right. but um, but that'd be great Paul if you're willing to yeah. well, take a look at that yeah. Put it on the list. well we talked about that actually I mentioned that today yeah. that we that since now that we've had it all spray foamed um, we could store but uh, Joanne kind of felt maybe that was too far away yeah. from the school and it's not yeah. easy it's when it snows to get in 
It's a, it's when, a trick to get in something, down there. When something happens, you got to be able to jump on it quick. Yeah, yeah. and it would be in, in the winter, you know, we don't obviously yeah. don't keep that path cleared. It's narrow to get in and out of there. And yeah. It's a trick, so. So you're looking for something long term. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't know if maybe even Jen Bartleman or something, you know, does she know someone who might have a smaller, you know, something? I don't know. I think ideal would be nice Lynn to have a small... Lynn, could build small... one with her, with her crew well, of Dave was middle nice schoolers. Uh, Tim Murphy at the RTCC does construction trades there. That maybe his, his kids could do it. It probably wouldn't be within this no. yeah. year, but yeah. to get into his... his There's life. also a cement slab at the fire station that would accumulate two pallets worth of stuff. Right, that something could go on. Yeah. yeah. So we can see. We'll look at some options. In the meantime, it's I don't know if we just have to tarp it or what we'll have to do for the winter. Yeah, well, if you had to do something yeah, neat, maybe it would be worth a phone call to uh, GW. Valley Motors is sitting empty. We haven't we haven't got a date for tearing that down yet. That's, That's funny, they told I, us it was... I thought they were supposed to do it in November. Exactly, October, we were in November, yeah, October, right now. November, yeah, yeah now. They're working in there, doing the remediation. Man, just, just, must be just this week. No, no, they've been... Most people, they've been in and out of there for about a month and a half. Yeah, but they're kicking all the supplies over there, redoing the bathrooms in the main building. They're just storing all their stuff in that. Building. I've seen the engineering company that came and talked to us, they've mm -hmm. been in there. Oh, okay. The the ones I, maybe it was a meeting you missed that um, you know, they came and reported about the yeah fall fall yeah because they talked about right. it was in yeah. before snow the exactly the <coughs> they've been doing work and they, they keep all the gotcha. stuff huh. in that one. Hmm. all right any other further discussion on that no. so we'll look at at least something short term. Look at, and then on the longer term, we'll be finding a longer term structure as well as maybe taking an inventory on what supplies we may need to purchase over a period of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, um, and that's something that Cindy has been working on, but. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. All right. And just touching base on some of the, starting some of our budget discussions. Um, so yeah, as I said, I, the only solid numbers I have are from the Lister's office. Uh, I know that Gary Kugler and Dave Altergetti are working on their numbers. Uh, Dietrich is working on hers currently. I just had a conversation with Alan and I gave, my, gave some preliminary information to Ryan. So we should have some better information. Um, mm -hmm. Once I have a couple hours, it's easier to kick out. But in the meantime, um, there were a couple things that I wanted to talk about to see um, what what um, how you felt about it. One of them is I know it's a big price tag, but it's eighty eight hundred for a speed cart. Now we had seventy four hundred in the constables, um, which purchased our two new lights. So we already have a baseline of seventy four hundred in there. I'm hoping that um, no <coughs> shoot. Doug, what's the word? What do you you put? What's the word? It's not chucks. What do you put behind the wheels of a truck so they don't chalks? Chalk. Chalks. Thank you. So I know we need chalks. That's something we were going to take out of the VLCT passive grant. If there was a little bit of money, usually you can write to five thousand. Maybe trying to put some towards this and to see if there was any. I was going to write to Natalie. That's right. I gotta write to Natalie at the state and see if there's any money. But. Um, but we've had a lot of complaints about speeding on Church Street. <clears throat> and I tried, I borrowed from Loretta, Chief Stalnicker and Royalton, their speed car for a couple of weeks. Um, I asked the state if they had one that we could borrow and they couldn't find theirs. They said they sent it out for repair, weren't sure they ever got it back. I so, talked to the repair shop and he said, yeah, we can send it back, but. Mm. I don't know where that is. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, it's um, it would be useful if we had our own because we could move it. When we've had targeted patrol done on Christian Hill, when we've had issues on Camp Brook or Gilead, or you know, so 8,800. When I wrote to the lady at WorkSafe and Barry, I was, that was painful. Have we seen significant decrease in speed? I mean, do we have results that show that this is? 
a valuable tool? Well, I think it would be because it records its speeds. Mm -hmm. So I'm still having complaints. I talked to Dominic Rantis. He was in this week, or at the end of last week, and he's one of the people. We have people who, work, who walk on Church Street a lot and are just commenting about the speed. Talked to the people at the credit union, and they said people are coming barreling off Church Street down the bridge, and they said, sit here during the day and look out. So... The heart, that's what would collect the data, would be a cart like that. And we could, you know, I think once you have one and you maintain it, you know, we would be able to have it for a while. But I don't know what else to do, frankly. We no, have two no, constables no. that we're lucky if we get, you know, no, 10, 15 hours, hours a week. Because Justin works weekend nights, so it, it's hard for us. And when we talked about um, putting this out and, and not having constables, but contracting with the state police, that was 40 plus thousand a year that the state police wanted. We figured we'd be looking at similar numbers for the sheriff's department. So an $8,800 speed car looks pretty good. So I, I just am not sure. We could throw it in the budget and see how but it I goes. Think, but I think at that point, we're just kind of, you know, treating the symptom rather than the problem. The problem is, at this point is we haven't found the right fit of a constable mm -hmm. to give us the hours of the day of patrolling that we would see some of these speeds coming down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, no, I do. I mean, I know it's hard for us to find anybody, but well, it just I mean, seems I like the, the hours that are being worked right now are, I don't want to say are worth nothing, but mm -hmm. you know, they're being done in hours that people don't see out there. Mm -hmm. well, the last um, couple of pay periods, I think there's been one was 16 hours and the other was 13 hours mm -hmm. you know, over a two week pay period. Right. Yeah. It's and, I, and it's hard too because I think, you know, Chris Jarvis was talking about this before either. Oh, I guess when we went to that <clears throat> breakfast meeting the other day, <clears throat> you know, if, if a police officer picks somebody up for a, for a DUI, there's easily 10 hours. And if we only have them in the budget for 20 anyways, that's it. I mean, you know, yeah. the majority of the work and paperwork is tricky. If we were going to hire someone full time, full time, full bennies, we could find somebody. But because we're only trying to do 20 hours, these police officer constables now have to be certified. They have to be part time certified. Um, and these guys all have full time jobs. They need to work full time. So we were lucky in the past because people were constables. Maybe they put together Rochester, um, Hancock, Bethel, and kind of made a living that way. But it's a trick to do because people want retirement. They want health insurance. They want that. So if you were going to bring have one person full time, we could find somebody. Right. There's no doubt about it. And officers that we have and see why why they're working for Royalton part-time or 30 hours a week and why they're doing what they're doing to make a living. Well, they're working, both of them work full-time, 40 hours a week. One is a Rutland County Sheriff's deputy and one is a police officer in, in Royalton and they're both working full-time and that's why, because they have families and they need, you know, like all of us, need to work full-time and they need the bennies. So, well, I That's, wonder if, I mean, I know, it, you know, it seemed like, or at least what I was told like 10 plus years ago is that people didn't want to see a police department in Bethel, that we were comfortable with the constable role. But the issue that has evolved over the last five to 10 years is that that simple come on for 10 or 20 hours of patrol time, again, all it takes is to pull over a DUI or a drug offense or something like that. And there goes your whole like 20 hours with all the, between going to court and doing paperwork and this and that. And you know, I wonder if the time is for us maybe as a board in a town to explore maybe the full-time officer thing. You I know, could put some numbers in the uh, budget with the Not to say that that's the way we're going, but it just, we can't find the right person because we can't offer full-time. And right now, whatever little bit of time we are getting out of constables, is it really valuable time that we're getting? And I would argue that it's probably not. Well, it's, and it's right. actually this travel time for people <clears throat> both live yeah. mm -hmm. on the other side of the hill. And, yeah. and it's travel time that gets taken out of the time that they're here. I mean, yeah, so if you had one full time and you still kept one part timer for a few hours a week, it might, you, know. you might see something there. I don't yeah. know. I could run you the get numbers some, maybe in the budget. Maybe get some information from Royalton on what, you know, a full time. Sure. 
I can do that. Well, if, it, if it's only totally apartment, just a full time individual. Right. Know? No, I mean that I could do. All I need is an hourly rate. I can calculate all the bennies myself. So that's easy enough. If it's if it's only for, well, this the conversations come up because of traffic control. Mm -hmm. Now that's a, a there. Is this the only way to deal with traffic control uh, or speed control? Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't think about full time, but are there other possibilities? For example, cameras on those radar units that can literally take a picture of somebody doing 35 in a 25 zone. Uh, yeah, but we only have two of those in town, and and the <clears throat> and that's stuff for like Christian Hill, and I'm not sure what this these could. I don't know if these could do it. I, I mean, obviously I mean, I, I, I'm just. I'm, no, I know. I'm just. Thinking, I'm just I'm trying, just, trying to say what's what's know. the problem with trying to, to test so often so that they're accurate, and you know, on the whole, so that <clears> we can yeah. force them. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is if you look at which you guys haven't gotten a long time, which actually just reminds me is you don't have any reports from Oscar. But the other thing that um, we we're missing is I mean the traffic is just one piece. enforcement piece is, is probably the piece that people complain about the most, right? But the piece that we're missing that we haven't had for, you know, some time now is the, you know, Wrong being able to partner with the school and being out and about and seen at the events, mm -hmm. if it's either sporting events or Ford Festival or whatever, um, or, you know, the other stuff that comes, uh, some of the issues that we have at some of the parks and, you know, what activities are going on there. Or yeah, and you get dogs um, and drugs, and I mean, we're getting the, a lot yeah, of yeah, calls. the animal enforcement. Yeah, no, 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 we're getting a lot yeah. of phone calls about I know that there's a lot more to it. I'm yeah, simply, no. I, but I just want to be clear, what's the problem we're trying to solve? I think it's several. I mean, we get a lot of calls for, um, for sure, dogs, because they're also the, 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 you know, the dog warden, but also um, drugs. I mean, we've had, that's been a real uptick in the last month, people calling the office and, and I'm trying to refer them to VSP where refer or I am referring to VSP Oscar's been in the loop some you're right when we have trust like people you know living at Peavine and camping and, and all that sort of stuff so we've had issues all over the map I mean I think Chris is right it may be the time to explore you know more options for policing and um, and even if we I think the 40 to 43,000 that we looked at not last year, but the year before, that was only going to get us 20 hours with the VSP. Right. So 40,000. If, if that could get rolled into a full time. Right, would be a lot more. Because yeah. I do think that I, I actually do appreciate that they've been doing patrolling at night. As somebody who walks this corridor at night quite frequently, I appreciate seeing them on, you know, at night, just both for drivers that just speed through town recklessly because there aren't cars parked, so you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, but True. I think there's also an increased drug activity. Mm -hmm. And so having, having that presence there is, I think, a good shift, but then it means we're sacrificing the daytime and just, just being a presence both. But if we also had a full-time individual that was, you know, they could do some day and night and move their schedules around to, you know, Absolutely. It, it just seems like we're missing a lot of the community pieces of it, you know, that so, community touch. And piece. you're also... Because nobody even knows who the new constable is. You know, no. like, you don't see him, he's not around. You know, well, he is around, but he's not there when right, you see him. Right, because he's there right. nights. And the other uh, thing, too, maybe, is... You know, Oscar's spending... This, this may be the time to think about something more, <laughs> partly because the community is saying we need more attention right. to something, to one facet of the position. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, a good point. I mean, and not it, like we want to push quotas, yeah. but obviously there's there some of the budget could be offset by an increase in police fines. I know the state keeps I don't know eighty. I bet they keep 80, 85 percent of a ticket at this well, point, but at least, still at least yeah. right. But it, yeah, you get like a yeah lesson. <laughs> I know it's crazy, it's but I mean still there is an uh, you know there is a some offset there. Um, well, and, I mean, it wouldn't be bad to just. I could throw the numbers in the budget. Throw the numbers together and see what that looks like, yeah. how that would okay. look like. Absolutely. Complete right. with retirement and home. And yeah. then, I mean. Uh, if, do you then have <clears throat> to provide housing or facility? 
I mean, that, that's another, if we have our own, quote, officer, where is that person, that office? Uh, He's still in the town. He's still in the town. Well, pretty much, they're, I mean, they're mobile. Next to trees? <laughs> well, I, yeah, but I... Good. <laughs> Well, uh, that, that's just another, that's just another. Exactly, we garden the two pallets. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the issue with police officers now is they're mobile. They pretty much all do everything by their MDTs, their mobile data terminals. Um, sure, would they be, you know, would they, you know, need access to stuff? Yeah, they were in the town office before where we have a little bit of, um, where we now put the postage machine and all that we did have somebody in there mm. um there's if they were going to be in an office one we well we'll find somebody hey the basement well <laughs> we'll find a place we, no because they they'll work with Wouldn't vsp because if they ever arrest anyone like a D, dui which they have done they go to VSP or they would go to yeah. Royalton. The other thing we had talked about was even contracting with Royalton once we saw you know, the price with VSP. And not that the VSP is not worth every dollar, because they, I'm certain, you know, they, they surely are. But 43,000 or whatever two years ago for 20 hours was rough. Well, that's, um, It'd be more. It'd probably be well, just and that's what we. It'll probably be just. It would be just as expensive. And that's what we've seen. Right. After you just contract a <clears throat> part-time person, you're paying a full-time, almost a full-time wage for it. You know what I mean? So it's. Yeah. But it just seems like we're not going to find anybody unless we're ready to. I think that's true. Yeah. But there's some opportunities. I mean, with the law enforcement community in the shakeup that they're in right now, there mm -hmm. there are individuals that are looking for something starting new routes in you know mm -hmm. you know. I think so. that's true. Would this be worth having as a discussion at town meeting? It may be. We'll and see. Having, having those numbers of this is what it would look like full, to have a full-time mm -hmm. person, right. and then have it as a discussion and yeah. see where it goes. And I, Could I be if you were going to. Some information about this is what it really means in terms of workload for catching that speedy person. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just a. 20 minutes you got the person pulled over right uh but Paper. what does what does that mean in <coughs> terms of uh, well, versus the difference of a speeding or a dui or a dui yeah. and, 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 I, and i think that's why i mean when we had when oscar first came to town right you know when he was devoting he was doing 20 hours most of his time here time for another we had a combination of the speed signs and oscar so we had the you know, the attention that the, they would get as they're coming through town, but they also knew that somebody was sitting somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's almost like, it's kind of like going through a construction zone, you see the blue light, like, mm -hmm. you know, you just zoom right by them, right? Because yeah. you know they're not going anywhere. So it's kind of the same thing. The speed signs are saying you're doing 35, but they blow through downtown because they haven't seen anybody get pulled over in a long time, mm -hmm. you know? I think to Lindley's point that the select <clears throat> board would have to make if you wanted something to be able to start in July, then you would have to, we would have to put the numbers in the budget and you guys would have to go to the town meeting with the numbers in the budget. If somebody sure. wanted to make a motion at town meeting to remove a, an amount from the budget, um, obviously they can't tell you where, but they could make a recommendation and then you guys could go mm -hmm. from there. But I think, um, let's just put the number in there and see what it looks like. And <clears throat> the other things I had on here were, Obviously, now that we're ensuring the shooting range. Uh, uh, quickly, before we move on from budget, this, is there any chance that uh, the new speed sign by the school could be moved so it's not blocked? It's by going the to be moved. Bowl? Yep, I asked <laughs> Richard to move it. It feels like a joke when you're. I know. Up. It's like I know it's there, but you can't. No, see no, it until Richard. You're right <laughs> I asked Richard to get it moved before okay, snow awesome. flies. Um, and he said that they. I mentioned that a few weeks ago. I keep the, heading to bring it up. And I well, Richard, it. yeah, he came up right away. So he knows, and he offered to, or I asked him to please do it before snow flies. So I'll double check with him. So the other things I had, obviously, was the $1,400 a year of shooting range insurance. So we paid that this year. So that will um, up, be added to the upcoming budget. Um, if people want to see a redesign of the website, then we need to put in more money than what's already in the budget. Did you, um, did you have an estimate for what? I have no idea. Um, I didn't see anything in there. Do you have any idea what, what they want to do? Well, I think people just have felt 
my understanding is people just think the website's too clumsy or too much, but I did ask Kelly to spend some time, and she did over the last few months, paring it back. But it's a difficult beast in the sense that people want access to everything, but God forbid they gotta click three times to find it. So I, it's tough. We've looked at other websites, and Bethel did theirs the same time that a majority of municipalities did the same one. The Snelling, Snelling Center, um, got a grant from somebody and they came in and helped people design the website because we get all of us had the same base <clears throat> base um, website design week page lookout so she did pare down she took some stuff off um, tried to combine community links make it a little more accessible so that it wasn't it was just in one page so there was a little more viewer friendly but my understanding is people just feel like they have to go too far to find things so we have tried to put more things right on the announcement page on the front. We've used Jean or Paul's suggestion of connecting things to the calendar. Um, so I don't know what people want, Dave, obviously more than our website offers. And, um, you know, we're just maintaining it in the office. None of, you know, nobody's designed Does he have any um, computer, like high, uh, higher computer classes at the high school level or any kids like that that would be not that I'm aware they're too busy hacking could use that as a <laughs> could use it as a project or mm -hmm. you know um, yeah. community service hours of could you be know, a college I or, mean there's obviously kids there's obviously web design programs at different at different um, yeah. you know I'm, colleges I'm just concerned that I don't care what you do these 50 people will be happy, but these 50 people are going to be pissed off. You do another change. Well, these are happy, these are happy, these 50, now they're pissed off. Yeah. You've got to come up with something. And I think it, give me a call if you need, if you need some help. I'll, I'll run you through it once, twice. Mm -hmm. then, then it's up to you. Click, you know, three times. You have to punch three keys. I'm sorry. Something else to factor in is not just the initial rework of the website, but depending on how you do it, if you have to have a second party that does your maintenance mm -hmm. and any updates. And so that's just something to keep in mind. I know, that, currently um, we're doing them because right. when you bought it, or not you personally, right, so when, you know when Kelly Bethel Kelly bought this thing, that. she's been doing the updates. She said originally she wasn't even hired to do that. It just was given to her to do, and she's currently been the one who continues to do it for us, um, but um, you know, we ha we ha we can't control the look of it. Like right now, the majority of the top of the screen is a picture. We you know we we can't even shrink that to which we would like to, so that the website is a little more information shows up on your screen, so you wouldn't mm -hmm. have to scroll down. To do that, we would have to buy another platform, and we don't have the manpower to move from the current platform to another. Um, so I have no idea. I was just going to see if the select board was open to it. I asked Vermont Digital. They do our um, other technology, and, and I was they don't do websites. So I'm not sure if it would cost. I mean, I think twenty five hundred, five grand. And I, I look at quite a bit of different towns' websites for yeah. like collecting bid results and stuff through work, and for the size town that we have, ours is actually decent compared to a majority of them that I go to. Like, some of them I go to and I can't find meeting minutes, I can't find, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, you really have to drill down to find anything. Or just the common information that we expect to see, you know, uh, you know, let's say, let's say, like, the bylaws or something, like, they don't have it on theirs, you know. It's like, yeah. So I think that we, we are doing well, and I think to Dave's point, maybe um, no matter what we do, it's probably not ever gonna be mm -hmm. up to everybody's standards, but. For a town of our size, I think ours is pretty decent. I think people forget too, you know, Pam is the town clerk treasurer, she works full time. Kelly works full time and she manages, you know, she does the majority of the zoning, she takes people's money, she deals with that. Dietrich only works part time and she does the finding, the billing, the collections, this, that, and me. So it's not like we have 15 people running around either, so we're all trying to, you know, to do it. And, um, but, so, I, you know, you don't? No. Oh, good. No. Well, that's good. Really well laid out. Put a suggestions tab on there. <laughs> if you've got. Way to the far right. There you go, yeah. Make, yeah. make it hard for Make them drill down a few times to find it. Contact us. That's a fun 
said that, but yeah. I got what you're saying. Yes? I found it really quite clunky and hard to find information. Uh, and I, I, I do think that it could be significantly streamlined. Now, I'm not a web designer, uh, but I would like to know what it would cost okay. to have somebody take a look at it uh, in terms of making it more accessible for the kind of information people want when they're going there. Uh, that's not to say we aren't doing well compared to others. It's simply to say, are we? Be it's an accessibility issue, just like so many other things. The easier it is, the fewer clicks, the more accessible we are. Mm -hmm. Well, it's difficult for us to know what people are looking for when they get on well, the bus. I'm assuming it's zoning, which is easy to find. I mean, but I think you know, I, that, so it's hard. That's what I look. If I'm looking at other people's websites, towns' websites, which I do frequently. If I, I right. hate to reinvent the wheel, I'm always looking for their it's like an ordinance or their zoning regulation, something like that. Well, but, uh, for example, I was looking for my property yeah. tax statement. You were looking for your what? My taxes. I we don't have that on the website. Why? Uh, because I. Uh, well, a list of reasons, but... Um, Isn't it public private? It's public information? Well, actually, it's not. That's where the trick lies, because where okay. people state payment is not. So no. what you put out there is difficult. And don't forget, because Vermont is Vermont, we get, like, today we issued eight revised tax bills. So you have homelet, home... Uh, residential, you know, home decorations. What's the word I want? Okay. All right. So let, let me let me back up. I was so the, trying and decide, to, that's, yeah, so that's I was right. trying to find my school tax number, mm -hmm. which is related and and my homestead status. I'm not talking about the specific number of dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a property report. Right. And and which is available if I go to the courthouse. Yeah. All right. But in its information that in other communities I found readily available Could on be. my on my town website. Yeah. Now, it, so that's one thing this guy he was, was looking, looking for. for. Yeah, now that's my it. point is I don't know what everybody's looking for, but that's interesting to know. But yeah. you also have to and I'm I'm and so I'm I'm looking for public information about the property I own. Mhm. Mm and uh, at a place where you all would think it would be available. That's interesting. I never. And and so that's uh, people would. In, well, I would like to. <laughs> well, that's interesting, though. But that's good. Yeah. Even if it's a what's the kind of information that people might be looking for. Right. And how do we how do we accommodate that? How do we know? Yeah. What's, what's the best first button menu list? Yeah. Huh. But I think you also have the combination of what would it take to you know, bring, bring our website up to Whatever. more modern in terms yeah. usable, but I think also Teresa touched base on it is once it is there, then how do we keep it there, right? And right now we don't have the hours budgeted well, right. We don't have the people budgeted to have yeah. someone maybe have eyes on it more than probably yeah. needs to be. Mm -hmm. So maybe at the same time, if yeah. you're talking about not uh, just the sort out there, it's if, it costs, and if it costs five thousand dollars to redesign it, let's say, but then it's going to take, I don't know, um, how many five hours, hours a week. You know, what but, would that number but, look like? It's, but the web, the, yeah. a good web designer is going to know that. A, this is already in your computer system, so it's a question of how do we make that available to the website so that an update in the property, for example, just mm -hmm. automatically happens. You don't have to update the website mm -hmm. just because you made a change and somebody that, bought it. That's assuming piece. the state's software is amenable. We're dealing with this on right. the transportation yeah, exactly. side. We can't get the state's software to Talk speak with, with any modern technology. And so it's, uh, it seems like it should be simple, but it's actually, it's causing a huge uh, headache. Uh, okay. 
We don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't know. Yeah. I, and I, I would, it's like the police officer thing. I would like more information mm -hmm. yeah. so we can make an informed decision rather than yes. this guy thinks it's easy and this guy thinks it's... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll get a couple numbers. I'll, but we should I'll probably also have numbers. what it's going to cost to update the website, but yeah, also we, what, yeah. what would it cost for maintenance for the yeah. website, if that's yeah. either internal or external, right? Right, we can do stuff. We put up or our what agendas. what we think it might be. Or... We do agendas, minutes, basic stuff, but... Because, again, we, you know, we used to have one extra person in that office that we don't have anymore, yeah. you know, so we're doing things with one less person, so... Any questions on the website? I guess I just, from my experience, just today, I couldn't figure out how to find the agenda for today's meeting or even if there was a Zoom link for it. And I'm not saying that the information isn't there somewhere, but it was very, I couldn't find it. Okay. Hmm. And uh, yeah, there wasn't. Okay. Rita, <laughs> blow out your mask. Yeah, Rita. Yeah. Hmm. And um, so, and then this Zoom link was private we've done Liley did it last time for us so we're trying to work out the hybrid option so we haven't released the link yet because we're trying to make sure the laptops the projector the everything works well so we're still in the figure it out phase um but yeah i'll ask kelly it should have been you should have been able to go to the uh, to the calendar and clicked right on the calendar for today and it should have brought you to that so i apologize that it was difficult for you to find i'll, I'll take a look i mean it's here. And so it's in government meetings and agendas. Okay. And that's it. It's that it's in the lineup below that. Is it in the calendar? Yeah, it's the supposed calendar to be. You get right to the dock as well. Okay, good. I just want to make um, sure. I I do want to say just because I'm one of the people who was frustrated by our town website, I think that what Kelly's done on this actually does make it more Oh good, yeah. I, I've been sitting here while we are talking, just navigating to things that I would commonly look for and I'm finding it easier. And some of the issues that I'd had before have been resolved. So I think that it might be a mix of both of like like we were saying, like having the numbers and you know looking at yeah. what that cost is going to be and weighing that out. But also, I, th I think doing more regular maintenance and listening here, you know, hearing the public comment more frequently about it because as as all you know able-minded people, we don't know what an accessibility issue looks like mm -hmm. for somebody That's until they point. bring it up to us. Yeah. Right. And so. Yeah, so I that's a good point. And, and also, yeah. too, that's a good point about putting something on the website for if they have okay. problems um, on problems using the website, they can, you know, email somebody. So, anyway, so that was in the budget. Um, in my, let's see what So, you're thinking at the next meeting we'll start to get. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm trying to, yeah, that's my plan. We'll, we'll start on getting. Vacation, actually, next we'll week. start getting some of them. Well, I'd Give like us to. The budget and leave. <laughs> well, I'd like to do, um, yeah, because actually I'm going to be on vacation, believe it or not. But my plan is if I can get fire department numbers, um, roads I can do, listers I have, City listers, D yeah. Trees is working on hers this week. I mean, if I sat down uninterrupted, I can. Everything I can, but PW for now? Well, I, I want to do theirs too. Um, so, I mean, I can do the. I can do the entire budget once I have a little more feedback from a couple people. And um, oh, the good news was too is I also found out as far as the budget for public works is just information in general. The state finally um, caught on to the shortage of people with CDLs, and apparently, all a lot of the um, people working for the state highway just went up for pay grades. So. A lot of the people just got a four dollar an hour raise and then so i did get a peek at that schedule so we can see what that looks like and um so apparently they realized that how hard it is to find people um then i was going to ask you guys okay janice punger had talked to you guys about the fifteen thousand dollars social services coordinator i don't know if you want to see that in the budget and i also updated you a little bit about eraf um for Pinello Bridge that we've picked up some of it and and um, so there'll still be a little bit more ERAF in the next budget but then that'll take care of should be all of our FEMA projects but I didn't know how you felt about the social service coordinator position if that's something I should also put in the mix or I'd say no all right well, that's fine okay I, I, I say no I, okay like I said before I, yeah I don't think I think that we are in the position to do that. 
Okay. We, we don't, we can't afford $15,000 is not come anywhere near paying somebody who's qualified to do that. Well, I mean, it, again, it doesn't necessarily have to mean it's $15,000 either, you know. Um, I mean, I think, I think, I think it's a good, you know, in a more perfect world, I think it's a great service to provide to the community. If we did have, you know, somebody that the community knew they could go to to find information or be linked to information when it comes to public service, I think, you know, that was just that one individual is what they wanted to do the job. Um, I think there's also maybe a more regional approach to that, you know, yeah. rather than more just a Bethel, maybe there's a combination of a couple towns approach where, you know, maybe we all could share and do something, but. Um, and I wonder how much that already exists, maybe not in exactly the way she was saying, but like Capstone is an example. I, I feel like there are social service entities mm -hmm. and maybe it's Bethel talking to them about how can we, how can we better funnel people to you when we get asks that are outside of our realm of the How do we put you on our new web? Yeah. How do we put you on the website? <laughs> how do we put you on the website? We also support a lot of these services yeah. through the human right. services uh, uh, appropriations, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's always something to, you know, keep, keep the idea floating, but um, maybe the time will come and we'll have more flexibility in our budget, but... Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was in a meeting the other day with some Randolph folk looking at housing issues and we talked with Capstone and, and Randolph area, some Randolph network, and frankly they do that already uh, and so it may simply be that we need more, we need to know <laughs> who it is that may be doing that already more, more education so that we can take advantage of, of stuff that is already in the mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily as uh, bare in a landscape, maybe. So if somebody as, called you, Therese, at the office or called somebody at the office mm -hmm. in regards to an issue like that, do you, do you have a list of all the... Yep. Places we, where you can point them instantly and say this is where you need to go. Or? Yep, and we refer them to Capstone, and we created. Um, I actually went online and got a bunch of links and information and put it in. We did a flyer or in one of the water bills. We split a piece of paper in half and we sent people a bunch of information on that a while ago, and then we just did it again. So if people are having a hard time with their making their utility payments, property taxes. Um, we have a link of a whole bunch of things, whether it was VCAP from the COVID money for utilities, um, places you can go to get a reduced rate for your electric, mm -hmm. uh, food shelf. So okay. we do distribute that information and certainly Capstone is one of the places. And, and of course, any social service appropriation um, that we already give out, we tell people to look at, you know, either in town report and see what agencies are out there. So, sure. um, so under the budget, just one, some good news is, you know, we started the year, I think we came in looking for about $30,000 since the state moved the, um, in the hole, since the state changed us from our 13.64% to 19.5, but with some savings in the health insurance line, one of the bigger sections I had to pick up to find was in public work. So it looks like um, we're gonna be able to cover public works with where we had budgeted for maybe a couple of family plans. We have some savings, so I think it'll pick that up, so. Mm -hmm. That's good news. What, You're talking about the current budget. The current budget. It's a piece of it. Is, there, but is the state going to give us any information to how they're going to screw up retirement for this current budget season before we actually approve mm -hmm. it, like last no. time? No. I mean, should we, I mean, are we looking at another? I don't know. 19% or Well, that's what I wonder smaller, because we've been we budgeting 15 because we've seen an increase in the past and, um, we had gone, I, let's see, we'd budgeted 15% instead of the 13.84, thinking because we'd seen an increase a few years ago when I was here and it came in October. Like, you know, obviously the, right. the state's yeah. on the same schedule we are, but we'd had, an, but we picked that up, but to go from that to 19 and a half, I don't know. Um, my contact at the state tells me, good luck, Therese. She's like, I have no idea what to tell you. I could ask her if he's heard, but, Mm. We, I don't know, I mean. It's scary to know that, right? right. Yeah. You had to ask us if we, there was something we wanted to talk about in the budget, and that, that sticks out on every 
I know. I don't know. Oh, retirement. Where everything, uh, uh, so. everything is normal. It's somewhere between 22 and 26 percent of money expended, mm -hmm. and every single one retirement's 46, 47, right. 46, mm -hmm. 47. Yeah. And that's a lot more than 13 to 19. Yeah. Well, some of it could be um, if um, one of the things that happens is there's certain people that we have a couple employees where they're split between, I have three employees that are split between um, different departments. So payroll can only pick up one code. So their retirement all goes to say all public works when in fact it needs to be split between um, water and parks. Um, so I make that journal entry quarterly. So it runs high and then I, you'll see a reduction like in public works because then that money is expended to parks in water, or in Dietrich's case, some is at the town manager's office, some goes to recreation. So I make those entries quarterly. So I can also look and see. Um, I'll go back and look and see what it's high. I, I went in, when I was going through it, like it stuck out. Yeah, Everybody I'll make a note. I'm not sure, Dave. That's my 46 and 47. Huh, that is interesting. I mean, because we haven't prepaid. So I'll have to go in and take a look. Um, retirement question mark. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Look at budget status, um, but that's trying to off figure out where we head. need to be on that. I mean, you know, thirty thousand dollars, for instance, is you know one and a half pennies on the tax rate. I know. So it's, it's not like it's a. And we you picked know, for up. our size town, it's it's yeah. a significant deal because uh, I can cover it. I can, and the transfer station is the transfer station. That's their issue. Water sewer, I can pick it up with you know obviously with cost cutting. Now I can pick it up out of the public works with that, that was tough. The part that's gonna be harder is the manager, like governor, government budget right there, because that's tight. I don't, I'm, I can't make up the difference of mine, Pam's, Kelly's. I don't, I don't have those kind of expenses. Am I gonna call office supplies? You know, I mean, <laughs> it's really tight there. The fact that we could save it out of well, it's not public just works was terrific. That, that, that was a big boon, but, um, so I'll look at that, Dave, I'm not sure but I don't know why it's running that high. I'll take a peek. But um, well, it's just not the savings right now in this current budget. But when we're building this next budget, I know I don't know what to you put know, in. You know, where where do we put it? I mean, because if we let's say estimate high and it doesn't come in, it comes in lower. That's great. But then we miss out on opportunities where we could have done exactly. something somewhere else. And it, put and money aside or whatever. And or last time, yeah. Miss it again, which isn't really our issue but if we miss it again then we have to chase through the budget trying to sacrifice something else to find it yeah so it's kind of and it's hard because last I knew there was a committee you know the committee where they uh, the treasurer Beth Pierce made a recommendation nobody liked it so then they had a committee that was supposed to discuss the mm -hmm. issue and last I knew that's where it stuck but if we used to budget 15 mm -hmm. I mean we budgeted a little bit of an increase we who is going to budget that? I can't imagine we're going to see that big mm. of a hit again. We could ask Kurt. I could email Kurt and see if he's heard rumor about... Um, of course, he doesn't go back into session until January, right? Exactly, but has he heard anything coming out of those, you know, those those meetings? But my guess is, I mean, we could... I mean, if we've done 13.84 to 15, we weren't going for a big increase, but maybe... I think they're all just putting their heads in the sand. Mm -hmm. Really. Maybe we need to go for... Unfortunately five or six percent this time and I mean if we don't use it we won't spend it but you're right it's a it's a missed opportunity it is something, something it's true is. but I don't I mean I never would have guessed they would have gone that high in mm -hmm. one one hit yeah. so I don't know what to tell you but we'll well we'll throw that in there and take a peek so okay. thank you for that I appreciate the um, thinking about those things anyways all right. Anything left on the town manager's report that you didn't get to? Or? Uh, tomorrow is the Bethel for All ages. You know, Bethel for All. We're doing that grant ages eight to eighty. So tomorrow there's going to be um, a luncheon from noon to one. If you want to meet with Steve, Stephen, and um, to have lunch here, obviously people have to bring their own <clears throat> meal. You could sit here and talk to Stephen. He's the one doing the accessibility portion of the aud of the walk. Oh, the audit that they've been doing. He's been here for a couple of days. Then from 1 to 3 tomorrow, we're supposed to walk from the town hall to, I think, the town office, then back here, then from here to the school. Um, I don't know if it's pouring rain, if we're going to do the whole thing or not. Um, it's going to be yeah, raining. I know. It's going to be lovely. And, um, but that's part of the walk audit. There's going to be state 
representatives here. Um, du Bois and King will be here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if everybody on the steering committee will be there. I'll be there, Nicole, Rebecca. Um, so see what information comes from that. Then next week, Tim, myself, Du Bois and King will have a, and the state are gonna have a Zoom meeting because $30,000 of the $97,000 grant is stormwater. So then Tim and I will do that meeting with the state to see what, you know, what we're looking at there. And I'm sure they've already, the, the state and Du Bois and King, and of course a lot of the data is already out there. Because um, Jim Pease at the state of Vermont mapped a bunch of stuff many years ago. Um, of course any information that Bethel had in prior reviews of your stormwater system that, that's out there that they have. So that is going on um, tomorrow. And um, uh, Dave Bergeron, sadly, is not coming back as our seasonal snowplow operator. And uh, Gabriel Feeney's last day was October 21st. So Alan and I are in the process of interviewing replacement candidates. We'll make some hires hopefully this week. Um, keep you in the loop on that. Um, and as I said in here, work is just continuing on better connections. That's tomorrow. The VOREC grant, uh, $500,000 that we wrote for, it is not going to include the pavilion. Um, they have asked that when we submit our full application that we do not include the pavilion. So it's really gonna be trails, benches, kiosks, trail markers, that sort of thing. I think too, they're obviously hoping that we all drop how much we want because there's still a lot of competition out there mm -hmm. for, um, for the grant. That was my conversation with um, Jackie Dagger of that one. I uh, closed out the paving grant, Sanders Road grant, the structures grant is kind of wrapping up um, the contractor that's doing the watershed bridge. We'll hopefully get to that in the next few days, wrapping up Gilead, um, which was our ditching bid, and um, he's gonna do some work on Brink. So, um, and I submitted our final DWSRF reimbursement for our 2.8 water for that loan. That was like 379000 So that stuff's up to date. Um, I heard from the auditors uh, last week. I got some journal entries from Jordan. He sent me one today. I updated him on the trial balance. I know Rick is coming back to finish up the BRTS, uh, the transfer station audit. Um, and the transfer station still needs to put out an RFP to find their own auditors. It won't be Sullivan and Powers next year, um, which they're aware of. But And um, I think we're still going to have a single audit because of the drinking water state revolving loan fund and some FEMA expenses. So Rick will be back, but so far it looks good. And, um, you know, they were happy. If they're happy, I'm happy. So also um, I'm going to be... Uh, going on vacation. So I'm also going to take, uh, I'm going to take Friday off and hopefully Tuesday through Friday next week. I do have a teams meeting and some other meetings next week, but I'll just do them remotely. So we'll see. Good. So we'll see how it all pans out. That's the plan. That's right. That's right. That's what we'll do. So, um, that's it for me. Okay. Oh, wait, no, that's not it for me. I'm sorry. Tax sale update. Ten. We have ten properties going for up for tax sale. We did the first round letters. Uh, the first stage letter goes out. We include a, it's a wide swath. We do it the first time. And we have received 20 plus thousand dollars with it. As soon as the first stage letter goes out, we receive a lot of payments, banks, people coming in. So we did that. Um, and some people that had been sent that were just delinquent in utilities, um, we are, if their amount is too low, we're not sending them to tax sales, so we'll shut their water off and get a payment plan that way. So currently we have 10 properties that are headed for the next stage of tax sale. Two of those I'm pretty sure are going to end up paying hopefully in the next you know, three weeks, so that would leave us possibly eight properties um, right now that may go all the way for tax sale. But sometimes when you get into the second letter, people realize you really mean business and will either, um, a bank will redeem or if they don't have one, maybe they'll, you know, work yeah. to get a mortgage or something. But it is never 
something that I recommend that a town ever buy anything at tax sale unless it helps us out, unless it gives us a property. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, do we already have infrastructure on that property? Is there a strategic reason that mm -hmm. that we have one? Um, I know that there's been a couple properties in particular in Bethel that people have been very upset about and said, why does the town continue to let people incur taxes or, or water to, you know, to the tune of, you know, 10 or 18 to 20 thousand dollars but we have sold properties at tax sale and they and they haven't sold so right. if a property goes for tax sale and it doesn't sell that's it unless the town wants to buy it <clears throat> then i understand that there's a couple properties where people continue to live there and they're just getting deeper and deeper they have they're always given the information to go to request an abatement um so i just really want to say to people publicly it's a difficult for a town because if you go out and you lay out just for, say you have to pay 20 to $25,000 at a tax sale, that pays off somebody's water, sewer, taxes, then you have to wait a year. And then maybe you have to evict people. That's gonna be what, five to $7,000? And then maybe you have a cleanup of a property. So now you're, you own a property, you've evicted people, you've cleaned it up, you're now in it possibly for another year of taxes on top of the delinquency. And now, now what? Now you've cleaned it, you have all this money wrapped into it to do what? To, to try to sell it, you know, and then we don't know what the market has done. So I just want people to understand, people get frustrated and, and call the town and say, you're letting so-and-so live there for free. Well, <laughs> I'm not, we've, we've, if we don't have a bidder at tax sale, right. um, I think people, it's difficult because what does, the town do what does the town of bethel do you know do you people have to understand when you purchase a property like that what you're getting into and mm -hmm. you know the, sometimes the bca the best option is for the bca to abate some maybe interest and penalty or some of it so that maybe the owner has a chance to you know maybe you have a chance to make a payment arrangement with somebody to, to pick some of that up so i just think that <clears throat> you know you have a couple properties and i've called people and said, hey, I'm another property for sale. And a lot of people don't want to pick them up because maybe there's somebody already in there or there's a lot of um, but there you know, garbage be, there or things out. There may be out. some cases where you have properties that are back on their payments by a lot. Yeah. That have gone through multiple tax sales that haven't done that maybe at that point the town does look at yeah. taking it over you know, and maybe you never are a whole out of it, but you're going to continue to be, to get nothing out of it anyways. You know yeah, what I mean? So, I mean, if, yeah. if they're continuing to not pay and not pay and not pay, I mean, you know, yeah. you may have to go in and take, take it to yeah. sell it for pennies on the dollar to at least be able to put it back onto it so that you can collect taxes and water and sewer. Yeah. And because if they're not paying taxes and water and sewer, I mean... You and know, it's hard that burden to, goes on to others as well. So. Yeah. And it's hard to know, too, eventually, if, if you get into a property where the property, once you finally evict and you actually have, so there's a one-year redemption period, which means um, right. delinquencies grow, and then however long it takes you to evict somebody um, takes a while, so then you evict them, and then you have to, then you find out, so now what are you dealing with? So is there, what's the structural situation of it? Can we, you know, we could sell it then and recoup or, mm. or now are you at the point where, okay, now we have to go tear it down and now it's just a lawn demo. I mean, you could still sell a lot, but I guess that what I'm saying is you, you, are, you will have two properties that we so, tried to sell at tax sale. One of them didn't go. I don't think it'll go this year. Um, so there may be two that you guys have to decide and say, okay, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do here? Are we going to right. hope these people go to the BCA and get an abatement, and then we set up a payment plan and we play catch up, well, the, or? You know, the BCA is receptive to do that if they've made some kind of effort. But a lot right. of times they come to the BCA right. and they haven't set up a payment plan, or they exactly they bypass the payment plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's another you know stickler spot. It and is. Then if the town does take over a property, let's remember what happened on Sugar Hill. Uh, right, exactly. Long run to write a check. It is, and well in the end, and that's exactly yeah. it. Because even if the town owns it, we can't yeah. make a profit. No, so even can't. if we go through all this process and we spend 20,000 <clears> and 
tax sale, and then we evict someone. So there's another, say, five. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but I'm sure it's not cheap. Another five grand to evict somebody. Then we do another amount to clean it up. And then you sell it. So by the time you sell it, the only thing, we, we could recoup what we have in it, mm. but that's it. Anything else that we make over that goes Thank back you. to the person we That last just one, then we cut them a check. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, hmm. Yeah. Like after all that, like how do you- I know, you, you and this could be money? bigger. So <laughs> yeah. anyways, so that's, I just want you to be aware. There's a couple yeah. out there that you're looking at. If they go at tax sale, it's the perfect thing for us because somebody else buys it. <laughs> I, I think I know one of the properties, and that, that amount of money is getting fairly high. Yeah. Now, is it something we should consider in uh, preface to the tax sale to let you, as the seller, if someone makes a bid for half that money? Oh, that's a good rather, question. Rather than we own it, that's someone a, might you mean take it. You mean abate the taxes down to a reasonable level well, where somebody level will where look would to acquire? Buy. Is that what you're talking about? I see what you're saying. I can ask the town attorney that. That's a good question. He's going to maintain the tax sale. I see what you're saying is if somebody buys it, the town will do X. Basically an incentive for someone to buy it. Yeah, something like, it's like if it's $20,000 of the taxes, you know you're going to get sixty grand in it and maybe nothing bad. But you could say, okay, I'll bid five thousand dollars. I'm the only bidder, and I have, you haven't had a bidder for three years. Okay, so can Maybe we? It's time to say, can't you just do like I'll a minimum that doesn't make the call, or a reserve mm -hmm. amount, or something like that? I don't know because normally it's the what somebody owes in delinquent taxes or utilities. You can legally charge up to fifteen percent of what they owe in legal fees. Any legal fees incurred after that, the town eats. There's usually like a $30 levy fee, there's publication fees, so all that goes back on it. So what, your question is, can we accept less? Right. I don't know. Um, can we accept less than what is There might owed? be like one or two cases where maybe the board well, ahead of time this has one given This one I'm thinking of, it. I think you're gonna have to do The minimum reserve is lowered. Right. Yeah, because it's already on your, basically, right. I consider it uncollectible. So when we go, yeah. when the yeah, auditors on. come, I'm like, shh. You know, if we see this, I'm going to be right. dancing on Main Street because I probably I tell you no. <laughs> but you know, they might not. The no, other, you can't. <laughs> the other thing is too is then, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. But the select board makes up part of the board of abatement. Yeah. So right, because it's the board of abate, it's right. the justice of the peace. Right. The um, APs and the and select the board select and the board listers. and the listers are on the yeah. abatement board. So the other thing too is if the property goes for, if the the select board was on there, the five of you obviously hold, not the majority, but a good chunk of whoever, of the board of abatement, so you could also push it your way by voting to abate some of it, because you're already eaten it, we haven't got it. But it's hard too, because you don't want to set a precedent that, oh, don't pay your bill, eventually the town no. will. Well, it'd be nice to know what, our, what yeah. other options yeah, we may I'll have. Find out. Right. Like Dave was saying, if we did have an option to make it more lucrative for somebody to wanna invest in that property. I just thought it was a bid kind of thing and yeah. without a necessary required minimum. But well, usually, no, usually what it's put up for is, is like I said, the owing, the cost, legal, the publication, the all that, because yeah. you don't, I don't sell a property at tax sale if it doesn't have a lot, enough owed because it costs us too much money. But once the mm. list comes and I hit the ground running, I try to find buyers. Mm. If your property's mm. going up for sale, I probably have someone who's willing to buy it because that's for me that's the big thing but last year I had two one right down to the wire I thought I had a buyer and um, then in the end they couldn't and the other one I I tried hard but I couldn't find a buyer because okay. that's the leverage you have if if someone calls and says hey you know you put my property up for tax sale and you say yes and I have a buyer mm. that's motivation you know people go to the bank and make things happen and you get your money back but right. so okay. Anyways, that's where the attack sale update. So, right. so thank you. Sorry about that. Anything else? Nope. I promise. All right. We had uh, select board meeting minutes from the 11th of October. On your appointments. How is there not call? It's, wait. It's where? Wait, what? Last sentence. Okay. I believe that Patrick's name is Patrick. Under climate action? 
No, 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 no. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Those are the energy committee meetings. Sorry, I was reading the wrong minutes. The name is correct at the top of that paragraph, but it's in the down towards the bottom of the text. Last sentence. I'm just trying to find your minutes. Hang on a second. They're in my packet. Oh, last sentence on that page. No, I'm just trying to find the minutes in my packet. Paul Valley. Under minutes and communications? No, under appointments. Oh, I'm sorry. The first, uh, second page. Top of the second first page. First page. Appointments. Patrick Redden. Down the bottom, last Paul Redden. Okay, got you. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Yeah, I have a, a couple of comments on the Bethel climate action of peace. Um, I wanted to make sure, you know, because the minutes are, you know, years from now, somebody goes back and wants to look and see what we did, the minutes are the real record of these meetings. I think it's important that we have the entire statement of what we uh, voted on in the, in the in minutes. The minute. Okay. Uh, and and this, uh, the last page in the packet, Gene had, or well, somebody had furnished the actual statement that went to the Climate Council public input form. I did it. And, and that is correctly worded okay. as to what we did. So, so you that want this in the minutes? minutes? Yeah, I think this should be okay. in the minutes. I any, can... any kind of a, you know, non-binding resolution or a statement of fact or whatever I think should be in the minutes. All right, I and, can have Kelly, when she puts them in the book, I can have her copy this and put it on the next page? Or, or do you want to uh, say? Well, I want to see something, I'd like to see something in the actual minutes that okay. refers, because this doesn't say anything about non-binding. Okay. Um, you know, and it doesn't, this, this other sheet uh, really, you know, states what yeah. we, what so we just, referring to items one, two, and three doesn't make sense without okay. yeah, in so, context. There. Yeah, because right, someone would have to pull up the packet. So I'll add yeah. the 10, 12, 21 submission wording to right. the minutes. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, just to make sure that it's on the record. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, anything else? Hearing none, nope. just need a motion to accept the uh, meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Okay. Is that Paul and Dave? Paul uh, and Dave. Dave moved it. Lindley seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There were quite a bit of other communications in the packet. Hopefully everybody had an opportunity to go through all those. The bigger one was the um, the municipal roundtable discussion from the Cannabis Control Board. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it, uh, the information. I just thought it was it would be interesting for you guys to see where they stand. And, um, you know, the municipality, everybody, you know, they'd ask people to um, do a survey, which we did. So I thought it would be good to have um, additional, you know, just to see, for you guys to see what the Cannabis Control Board is saying. Okay. And I had a couple of questions in regards to the budget status report. Okay. Um, okay. A couple questions, a couple concerns. So on the town-owned equipment piece, so we're, we're a third of the, well, we're 33% of the way through our budget. But we've already consumed um, two of 14. Um, no, uh, yeah. Okay. But we've already consumed. Hired services? Um, no, under the um, repairs, parts, and tires. We've already yeah. consumed 46% of our allotted budget. And typically, if history serves me right, the winter time is when we consume a large amount of that. And we've already spent half okay. of our budget area. So I'm a little. Yeah, I'll have to see what's little, in there. You know, now if you said, hey, we just bought a bunch of tires or whatever, well, we did. That, then that makes sense. Well, and, we, and he usually did. in the winter time is when we have a lot of breakdowns and. Yeah. Um, and he did just buy tires. So, I mean, that was one of the it things. It may be an item we might want to really take a it look at. Like that's a category that's kind of a catch all. Um, but at the same time. A lot of different things. Well, we added I noticed that, that no, year. nothing has hit diesel fuel yet. No. And so I did any that. of that money get put in the wrong basket or. 
last payables, I, or was that for the fire department? Because I noticed Somebody no diesel fuel, fuel had been put in. Well, there, this so. is also the end of September, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. I think diesel. I think he may have. So I didn't know if maybe like it got coated wrong I or something. Look, we'll look at the mm -hmm. detail, and um, but I do know. Because you would have thought we would have spent probably fifteen thousand dollars or ten at least yeah. on diesel fuel, and there's been nothing. No, so. well, and he comes mm -hmm. and fills us up, and I, I think, think he it was in the last one that I saw, which would have been in October. Yeah, so it was, wouldn't it was be a diesel okay. in this budget, city. and I also think he came in in June and. Okay. Top them off because he thought the price was going to go up, and he did just buy tires. So I'll have to look at the detail. And then I didn't get a chance to go up there today, but um, have we hauled any sand in yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just, yeah, he just hasn't built up. Because I just noticed there was nothing in the sand. I was like, well, I hope we've hauled sand in. Oh, well, we have. Yeah. yeah. He just. <laughs> I think that um, Dylan will probably build okay. it when you're done. And what about? And usually we don't haul salt until it's time. But. We don't haul salt, and we did just get a price, and we just signed an agreement and um, it's a dollar less than per ton that we paid last year okay. so so we just figured that out today because even the state was struggling with salt uh, yeah well it's so far <laughs> well i call no i mean buying i yeah, call yeah. or i emailed the guy to figure out what the state contract price was for salt so yeah. right, those are the big out. ones that i had but so i'm not sure about the other one i wanted to tell you is hired services no, or equipment hired services well. yeah there's also a revenue to offset that because we had to there's a grant in there for um, to offset some of that expense, so there is a revenue. Not yet because it's a reimbursable. Yeah. So we have to pay up front and then get the money later, mm -hmm. as the state likes to do. Okay. So I'll look at the detail. I think that's too much. Okay. I'll look a note. Look at the police department labor number. I know. 9.4. I know, exactly. Uh, See detail on uh, look at PW. That a well, exactly. I mean, that's it. So some of this year, if they don't pick up speed, then frankly, some of that will be used to offset our expense and um, our retirement that the state you know, hit us with. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking for that. Number. Do we have a certain time of year where we get? Where we receive more town clerks fees than another like is it the first quarter when you see a lot more clerk fees or well pam, is that why it's off right now pam keeps her own checkbook so if she gives them to kelly to ring up yeah then um then we see that but if she doesn't then she only pays you i don't know if she does it quarterly or twice a year even okay. she ends so up she, had, could have a she collects money. the money and then writes a check yeah. and i know she had been doing she'd been really busy um doing recordings but as the inventory of properties to sell has gotten lower. I think she said she had four property transfers to record that she had in the last, that she gathered in the last maybe 10 days. And before that, there'd been a lot more, so. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Do we know where these go after you fill them out? Yep, if you come, you can leave them at the town office or um, you can just leave them at the town office. So there's no drop place for them right now, currently, that I'm aware of. And where are you, Lindley? Yeah. And um, I think we, we had talked about putting some out in the water bills in November. I'm not sure if we're still doing that. Yes, you did. And um, so anyway, so for people at home, yeah, there's a, or people at home. For Julie, the only person at home, is, uh, but people in the audience, they're Bethel for All. This is a postcard that's going out to help with the accessibility ages 8 to 80. So there's a couple here. Um, we're looking for people to fill in this statement. I want blank in, in, in Bethel Village, whether you want more accessibility, you want to see more trees, you want more um, pedestrian crossing signs, you want, you know, some people will write something like, I want Bethel to be more affordable. Well, be a little more specific, you know? I mean, that's what, you know, we all want Bethel to be more affordable, but if it's something there, it's nice if it's something we can understand or a goal that we really can read something mm -hmm. into. So we have, these are, I think, in businesses, they're supposed to be in businesses around town, and um, so people that stop by could pick them up and, and um, either leave them there or drop them off at the town office. Okay. All right. Anything else to come before the board? Um, one other quick question. So I know that um, 
Tedro painted the parking on one side of the road? Is he did. Is there a chance of painting the parking on the other side of the road? Not right now, no. Okay. Well, they were, that was in their contract. They were to do one side of the road. Just one side. And um, it took us a while to get there because they were looking for paint. They had a shortage, so not alone. So Other not towns in the state. Winter. It is not going to happen. No, they no. did what was in their contract. Right. So are we going to do it? No. But we did, I did talk to Alan. Alan and I have agreement now that the crosswalks, everything will be painted twice a year, before Memorial Day and before Labor Day. And that's the agreement he has the winter to get his sprayer fixed. And um, But... That was actually his suggestion, and I said it's a good one. So no, the other side's not going to get done. Sorry, yeah. we'd hoped. I not thought to mention maybe. you probably won't even get it done now, even if you wanted to. So. Well, yeah. right, and I figured it might be too late, but just do you well, they're just know having shortages. Happen yeah. Yeah. At least they did the crosswalks. I mean, we got right. the bigger stuff on our side, but yeah, I had hoped we could maybe make a deal with them at the last minute. And nope. Well, even right now with like the paint, mm -hmm. like all non-essential roads are not getting paint right now in Vermont because Vermont is saying there's a paint shortage right. and yeah. so they're dictating which jobs get paint and which don't right now because it's gotten so bad. So. It's true. I had to submit ours yeah. and they were like, mm, we'll yeah, see. There's a lot of like the, <laughs> like the statewide markings that you just see that they right. normally come through. There was, they didn't start doing those until a few weeks ago because there's just no paint out there. So, yep. Or there's paint, but there's one of the additives to the paint isn't available right now. So. Did you all see that the um, graffiti got painted, though? Yeah, it looked nice. Uh, do you know how many years that took? <laughs> yes, I do. But it's finally done. We, we The road crew did it after we made... we, ha we At midnight. Under the <laughs> yeah, she, no, no, that did not happen. We did it legitimately in between um, trains. Yeah, after striking a deal, basically we ended up going. Don't to ask. The state. It's just done. Okay. We went to the state because it was going to cost us several thousand dollars if we went through the railroad to take a class, a permit, to do this, to do that, and we finally went to the state. They reached out to somebody at the railroad and they agreed that they could quote unquote make it happen so that they were doing maintenance in our area so that we could paint it. Because without that, there was a <laughs> list of things mm. with a big price tag. I'm like, I'm not gonna pay you five grand to go roll over something. And I told Alan, I said, leave a sticky note. So at least it says we like landscapes or <laughs> something. So no, please get a permit. <laughs> yeah, please leave a note. No tagging right unless you have a permit. Yeah, yeah, so um, so they were, yeah, so no, so he had, they actually did it a month ago. Yeah, I, I, I don't know when it was, but a couple weeks ago, I was like, I was working with oh, the and saw right. uh, some folks come down the alley. Yeah, and, but good. And it was Ford Festival when I noticed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was done yeah. before that, yeah. so it was good. almost an act of Congress, yeah. but mm -hmm. at least things. now we know the right people to call at the railroad so that they can schedule maintenance because they're very... Yeah. Clear on what they're going to let you do near the railroad. Hmm. Right. Anything else to come before the board? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just follow right. the rules. Just need a motion to adjourn. All right, Lindley and Dave. Thank you. Mm -hmm.